Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Malak from the 12 Tribes United. The Passover is coming soon. It will be April 10th at sundown 2017, what the, what the world calls April 10th, 2017. Okay? And uh, we're going to go over a brief lesson on the Passover, how to keep it and what is expected of us. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter, Exodus 12 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, so this is the Lord that spoke to Moses and Aaron. Aaron is his brother. Aaron was the high priest in the land of Egypt. So they were in, a, so Israel was in the land of Egypt. All right. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. What month is this? Is what they call, is what the scriptures call a bib. All right. That month is in the spring. All right. The first new moon in the spring. Spring usually happens between March 20th, 20th to 22nd, somewhere in that bracket today. All right. So the, any, the new moon that comes after that time period is the new year. All right. And once the spring comes in, spring season, the, the next new moon that comes in that spring season is the, is the uh, new year. All right. It shall be a first month of the year to you. So the first month is a bib, which is, um, you know, it's the first Hebrew new year. It's the new year. It's the first month. The new year doesn't start in January 1st. All right. That goes back to paganism, Janus, and so forth and so on, you know. Everything, you know, grows, starts to grow in the spring. In the winter, everything is dead, all right? So the Passover is supposed to be, the, the, uh, the new year starts in the spring, and so does the Passover. It says, Speak ye unto the children of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month. So it says, Speak to who? The congregation of Israel, all right? It says, saying, in the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. So on the tenth day of the first month, we're supposed to go and pick our lamb. Go wherever we're going to go, go among our flocks, you know, go to a butcher, you know, wherever. You're supposed to pick a male lamb. Every man a lamb, it's going to tell you. According to the house of the fathers, a, a lamb for a house. So in every house, we took, uh, we took our, we took to ourselves, to ourselves a lamb. All right. It says, "Your lamb shall be no, no. House of their fathers, a lamb for a house." It says, "If the household be too little for the lamb, what does that mean? Too little for the lamb? That means that here it is. You got five people in your house, and you got a big lamb. Obviously, that lamb is going to be too big." The household is too small, too little for that lamb. That lamb is big. Let's say if it's a 75-pound lamb, 100-pound lamb, and you only got like a few people in your house. What does the scripture say? Let him and his neighbor next unto his house. Take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make count, make your count for the lamb. So if, um, if your lamb, if the household was too little for the lamb, meaning the lamb was obviously too big, then you invite your neighbor, invite enough people that that could eat that lamb, you know. So, whichever amount of people it needs, you know, another household, you combine the households and y'all have that lamb. All right, you're not supposed to let the lamb go to waste. It says your lamb shall be without blemish. What does that mean without blemish? That means that nothing is wrong with it. It's not. His, his legs isn't broken, ribs ain't broken, you know, eye is poked out, um, whatever it may be, this lamb has to be without blemish, without any, without any, um, without anything in it, meaning no cuts, scrapes, no, nothing. It has to be a straight up, you know, um, it has to be a, a lamb without blemish. A male of the first year, what does it mean by a male of the first year? So the lamb is supposed to be a male. When it says male of the first year, 
that means you get a lamb that's beef, that's not a, that's not over a year old meaning first year you know like when you you know like when you hear people say your baby's first year what is your baby's first year from 0 to 12 right so you can get a lamb 6 months old 3 months old a 3 month old lamb is approximately 75 pounds usually all right so you have to get a lamb of the first year not of the second year you get a lamb past a year old you start to go into the second year all right so you have to get it of the first year all right a lot of people make that mistake and they get a big giant lamb that's almost an adult and it's not a lamb anymore you shall take it out from the sheep so you can take your lamb from the sheep or from the goat so you can also get a goat that's of the first year and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month so you keep the lamb until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening so what does that mean you keep the lamb from the 10th day to the 14th and at the 14th that evening meaning on Passover you kill the lamb and they shall take of the blood where is that blood coming from from when you cut the lamb's throat the blood and strike it on the two side posts so you take the blood from the lamb and you strike it on your two door, door post all right it says and on the upper door post of the house wherein you shall they shall eat it so where you're eating the lamb is where you strike the blood on the door post all right wherever you're located sometimes we have lambs and a lamb in a school congregation so forth and so on all right there's nothing wrong with that you're still keeping the law all right but originally we kept it at our houses but a house is a school, a synagogue is a school. It's all a house, all right? It says, and ye shall eat of the flesh of the, in that night. So that night of the Passover, you're supposed to eat of the flesh, meaning eat of the lamb. In the night, roast it with fire and unleavened bread. So you have fire, you roast the lamb of fire and unleavened bread, meaning bread without leaven in it. And with bitter herbs, Bitter herbs is basically like cilantro, um, mustard greens, kale, could be a bitter herb. Anything that's a herb, but it's bitter, all right? They shall eat it. So you got the lamb, the unleavened bread, and the bitter herbs. That's the, that's, that's the Passover meal, all right? It says, eat, of, eat not of it raw. So you're not supposed to eat the, the meat raw. It's supposed to be thoroughly roasted, cooked. No sodden at all with water. What does it mean to sodden at all with water? That means not to go and boil the lamb. That's what that means. That's not the way we're supposed to cook the Passover lamb. All right? On the first day of the Passover. It says, but roast with fire his head and his legs and with the pertinence thereof. So we're supposed to roast the entire lamb whole. All right? Not lamb chops, as some people do. All right? Yeah, after you kill it and after you eat it, yeah, it's going to be chopped up after, after the fact. But just to go and just chop the lamb and then roast it and then just hand it to people, that's not the way we did it in Egypt. That's not what the scriptures say. Like I said, it'll be chopped after we roast the lamb. So in a way, it is lamb chops after the fact. All right? So let's go on. And let me, um, and before I, um, before I continue, let me just brief on the Passover. Okay. What we normally do is we buy a roaster, something that's big enough to roast the entire lamb. We find like a place where we can roast it, camping ground, park, the back of your backyard. We roast the entire lamb that night. And uh, we roast the lamb whole, all right, in the uh, roaster. Roasters, sometimes they can cost up to $1,000 or more depending on the size of the lamb you have, all right? Unless you got a very big oven to put a lamb in, a whole lamb in, we usually use a roaster, all right? It can get expensive, but we have to do it. It says, that's what it says in the scriptures. It says, and let nothing of it remain until the morning. So you can't, you can't uh, um, have leftovers, all right? You cannot have leftovers of your lamb. You have to eat it all that night. All right. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. 
So before the sun go up, we have to burn whatever's left of the lamb. Obviously, the bones, the head's gonna be, is gonna be left, so forth and so on. We're supposed to burn that with fire, get rid of it. So there's no leftovers when it comes to the Passover lamb. We have to eat it all, or roast, or um, burn the rest with fire. It says, and thus ye shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you're supposed to have a staff. You don't. You see a lot of Israelites, they don't have those staffs anymore. All right. When I first came into the truth, we used to come with our staffs, meaning sticks, shoes, staff, and our loins girded. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So we're not supposed to, you know, you see a lot of people partying and, and doing a lot of, you know, rapping and doing a lot of stuff, you know, on the Passover. The scriptures don't say that. Because when we was in Egypt, we had to do the Passover in secret in Egypt. All right. And um, basically, we didn't have time to have all these celebrations and parties and so forth and so on. All right. So we ate it in haste because we had to leave. We had to leave Egypt that night. All right. We left Egypt that night after we kept the Passover. We left Egypt. All right. So it was the Lord's Passover. Now, of course, now we celebrate, commemorate, you know, the Lord's Passover. Now we celebrate it now. As a memorial, it says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. So the Lord said he's going to pass through, e through Egypt that night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. So anybody that did not keep, they had the blood on the doorpost and they did not keep the Passover, their firstborn got put to death. All right. Both man and beast, even the animals and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. It says, so that blood protected us from our firstborn being put to death. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon your house where ye are. And when I, shall, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's where the word Passover come from. It says, and a plague shall not be unto you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So when, when, uh, when the Lord passed over the houses, if he saw the blood, he kept going. He didn't kill the firstborn. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. So this when we do the Passover, we do the ritual as a memorial. All right. And ye shall keep it as a feast, keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations. So it says to be a it's a memorial and we're to keep it throughout all our generations, meaning we're still in a generation now. That means forever. That's basically what it's saying. You shall keep it, keep it a feast by our ordinance forever. So, so you, have, you have people teaching we don't have to keep the Passover, so forth and so on, that's done away with. You know, they use the New Testament to say Christ is the Passover. No. The scriptures say the Most High doesn't change. The scriptures say forever. That means even in the kingdom we're going to be keeping the Passover. All right? It says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. So for seven days, we're to eat unleavened bread, meaning we cannot eat bread with leavening ingredients in it. All right. Even of which, obviously, one of the obvious ones is yeast, but there's other ones. But yeast, definitely, that's obvious. Even the first day, you shall take leaven, put away leaven out of your houses. So anything that has any leaven in it, not just yeast, there's many ingredients that have leaven in it. We're supposed to take it out of our houses. All right. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So if you eat unleavened bread, if you eat anything with leaven in it, from the whole seven days of the Passover, the scriptures say your soul's going to be cut off, meaning your spirit's going to be cut off. You're not going to make it to the kingdom. All right. That's what that means. Cut off from Israel. In the first day there shall be a holy convocation. So the Passover is seven days. First day there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation. So the first and seventh day is all considered like a Sabbath, meaning a day of rest. We cannot buy, sell, so forth and so on. The days in between, we can buy and sell, but we're still not supposed to eat leaven. All right? This video is ending. I'm going to say shalom. Um, we're going to do part two. Shalom.